Hey, so today I wanted to make a tutorial on texture painting and uh, texture painting with different masks in order to create kind of more detailed objects. This one's a little bit overkill in some areas, but in other areas it looks pretty good. Basically just using texture painting and procedural methods to make more realistic and more detailed props and uh, houses and objects and stuff like that. So we're going to jump right into that. All right, so here we go. We've got this bottom little part of my church. And it is uh, basically undetailed. It's just a wood texture. It looks all right, but uh, there's a lot of ways that this could be quickly improved. And so we're going to go through and we're going to do that. You may know that you can combine different images and paint masks for them or use noise textures or other textures in order to layer different textures on top of each other. An example of this, if we just do it really quickly, is I can grab a mixed color node. So I'll duplicate this one, and I could add a noise texture, plug this factor of the noise texture into there. I'm going to use a color ramp, uh, and I'll just duplicate it from down here. Make a uh, sharper fall off between the two. And as you can see, stuff's already happening. I'm going to change this color to something like a green. And there we go. Now we've got two separate images mixed together. You can do that sort of thing to quickly add detail to any sort of house or prop or asset, whatever it is. You can also do the same sort of thing with shaders. So I could grab a diffuse shader and mix these two things together. And then instead of using a mixed color node as a mix factor between textures, I can use a mixed shader node to mix different shaders together. And I'll just change this to green. And there we go. And uh, that way you can still have some normal data and some roughness data. Uh, easily accessible without having to make a whole bunch of new nodes. Today I'm going to show you how to do this, a mix of procedural and textural. The very first thing we need to do is we are going to want to delete this stuff right up here. And I can keep this mix shader. I'm going to first flip this diffuse and this principled BSDF because I want the primary uh, texture to be my wood texture. So that one will be at the top. Next, I'm going to add in a new image texture. I can duplicate my one from over here and I'll bring it up over here. And I'm just going to delete the thing that's currently in it. I'm going to press new. I'll name it something like paint mask and I'm going to make it 2024 uh, resolution. You don't have to do this. The reason I'm doing it is because it's on a sort of big object so I want a bit more resolution for it. I'll click new image and then we can plug this into our mix factor. And as you can see everything goes all white as because currently we haven't painted anything so we only have one color on this which is fully black. Next let's go to our data properties panel and we don't want to affect our current UV map because that might get a little bit wonky uh, especially with this where I have overlapping faces. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to add a new UV map and I'll just name this something like paint over in the shader editor. We can add a new UV map and I'm just going to select paint from this drop down menu and plug it into our paint mask texture. Let's jump into the material preview so we can see what's going on. First, make sure you've selected this UV map, your second one and or the new one that you just created if you have multiple and then select the paint mask texture that you have. I'm going to open up the UV editor now and then let's go into the material preview and I'm going to open up texture paint. Now if we start painting on something nothing's going to happen. It's going to freeze my computer because it doesn't know what's going on. So make sure that this is selected and while it's selected tab into edit mode before you jump into texture paint mode select everything, everything that you want to affect. And you can also go into the material area and choose select like that if you only want to affect a certain texture or unwrap a certain texture. And we're just going to press U, Smart UV Project, and I'm going to give it a very small island margin of something like 0.001. Then I'm going to click Unwrap. And I can click Scale to Bounds too. And as you can see, everything has been unwrapped nicely into this little tiny grid area. And now, with that being said, we can jump into texture painting. So what I'm going to do is just make sure that I am holding over this texture paint mask. Definitely make sure you do that first. Otherwise, you're going to be affecting the other textures in your shader, and that's not what you want. So I'm going to make sure I'm in that, and I'm going to just start painting. And as you can see, we get to choose where these uh, textures mix together. So if I wanted some grass building up underneath these uh, boards and stuff I can do stuff like that very quickly let's say I wanted to add dirt too you might be tempted to make a whole nother paint mask 
and duplicate it and then get another mix shader and another diffuse shader plug those in together and then use this new paint mask as the mix factor but uh, there's a much easier way to do this and it only forces you to use one texture which is very good because textures are a big reason that you lose data or you know you lose storage within a project so it's always good to keep one your textures a little bit smaller if you don't need them to be super large and two it's always good to try and use single textures if you can so what we can do is we can add in a combine XYZ after this texture and I'm sorry actually it's a separate um, color not a combined XYZ or a combined color, it's a separate color. And we're gonna plug this color from our paint mask into the separate color. Now what I can do is I can separate each of these colors out into their own mask and use those instead to paint over everything. I'm gonna keep my paint mask already here and I'm going to use these three values instead as my mix factors. So to keep things easy to remember, I'm gonna use uh, my moss is gonna be this green one, this first one. So I'll use the green factor, just so that's easy to remember, moss is green. And I'll use this red value as my dirt mix factor, because dirt is kind of a reddish color. Now, as you can see, because we painted white, we have just a mix of all these colors because white is presence of all colors at once. So we're gonna have to get rid of that. Let me jump through and do that real quick. So now what we can do instead, instead of using black and white as our mix factor, we can instead change this color wheel to RGB and we can turn up or turn down these different values to control which texture is being displayed where. So if I wanna just paint the moss, I can use this green value and turn that all the way up and my recommendation is always to use add. Uh, if you use mix, you start to get some weird results when you start overlaying things like red and green on top of each other. It's also a lot easier to get rid of textures, but it's the same general idea. So I can just paint over this and you know, we've got a few issues. Um, they'll be easily resolved. I just gotta paint from a different angle. And here we go. Now I've got my, my moss uh, coming in and as you can see, I didn't get rid of everything red which is okay, but I'll just paint this in over here on the side. And that is, you know, a mossy side of the building. And then if I wanted to say paint some dirt up the edges, I could just turn this green value down and turn this red value all the way up. Just start painting some stuff in here. I'll start painting these boards. Uh, they're giving me a little bit of trouble right now. And there we go. They're just gonna add on top of each other and we'll say that this is the dirt going up the side of the building. And I'll add some textures in, in a second. And there we go. So now we have um, a mask for a bunch of different textures. And let's add some, let's add some real textures into here real quick. I'll go over here and find my different textures. Maybe I'll use just this regular soil texture for my dirt. And there we go. Looks nice. And for my moss, I'll go find a moss texture and let me organize this a little bit just so these things aren't overlapping on each other. Here's a moss texture. There we go. Now I've got some moss uh, overlaid on this. And the nice thing about this method using masks is that you don't have to have such a high resolution image because you can just use tileable textures and I can just scale them up. And now I still get all the detail without as much of the uh, performance hit on my computer. This is the way a lot of uh, video games work is they'll use a single image mask and then just use seamless textures to create highly detailed and realistic looking objects. Now I mentioned that I was going to make this a bit more procedural and I will. So uh, let's jump right into that. First, what I want to do is I want to add in a mix color node and I'm going to add it after my red factor. And as you can see, this uh, starts to gray it out. I can mix in this color fully and pretty much get rid of the color entirely. We'll change the mix factor so it's mixing these two different masks together. Pretty simple concept. I'm going to change this mix to multiply instead so that dark colors get darker and light colors stay light. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a noise texture, plug it through a color ramp, and I'll just plug that into this black and white value. Or I can also plug it into the factor. It doesn't really matter what you do. But I'm going to bring these two closer together, create a sharper fall off, and I'll just start changing the scale of this thing. Maybe change the detail and change the roughness like this. Now, as you can see, we have a little bit of a different kind of mix factor between these. It's kind of like having a brush built in. If you have brushes, obviously, this, you don't really need to do this. But uh, when we go back over, this thing's really going crazy down there. 
when we go back over this thing, it'll look a lot nicer so I can bring these black and white values closer together and just have something like this. That's just a little bit more interesting and realistic looking. Maybe I'll up the detail uh, so that different spots aren't, you know, fully dark and they're all just kind of mixed together a little bit nicer. And then I can do the exact same thing with my other texture if I wanted. I could add a multiply node and just plug this color ramp into the bottom and one thing that you'll notice with this is then you get the same noise patterns now um, this isn't a terrible thing but it does mean that you'll never have overlaying spots um, so an easy fix to that is basically the exact same thing we did with this paint mask is we can get a separate color after this noise texture and instead plug the color value of the noise texture in and then if we cycle through these, you'll notice we'll have three different patterns. Then I'll just plug these through a color ramp, a green value, and then plug them into my mixed color nodes. So I'll plug this into the bottom one, plug this one into the bottom one, and plug this one into the bottom to keep things a little bit organized. And then we'll have two separate mixed values. As you can see, these two things are mixing together a little bit. Now, obviously, you want to get these things a little bit dialed in if they're not looking too great. So that just takes a little bit of uh, trial and error for the most part. But otherwise, you can do a lot of uh, cool stuff with this. Now, one thing I do like to do uh, mainly when I'm doing this kind of method is I'll add it in pretty thick at the beginning like this. And then I'll go back through and I'll change my value to subtract. And I'll subtract, you know, the red color if I want to get rid of the dirt. And just subtract it along the edges so that I can kind of bring these values in a little bit and they're a little bit more subtle. So I can do something just like that and then I could go change it to my green value and just subtract the green out of here and it just works a little bit better. And there we go. Now, uh, beauty of this is we still have space for one more different texture mask and actually we have space for two uh, but I'll get to that in a second. So let's add in one more mix shader and I'll create a whole nother little image texture list for this thing. I'm gonna move everything over so I have a little bit more space and this will be kind of a broken wood texture. Now, also, whenever you're texture painting, remember to go through and save your image. Uh, either click Save As to save it somewhere. I'm just going to save it into my Blender projects. I'll click Save As. Or if you already have the image saved, you can just go up here and click Save. Otherwise, if Blender crashes, it is going to overwrite your image with just a black texture, and you'll lose all of your progress. Unfortunately, there is not an auto save on uh, image texture painting which is a feature they probably should add but uh, we'll get over that now I have this new texture set up I'm just gonna plug the diffuse into here uh, like we did before and I'll use the blue value of my paint mask and I'll plug that over into this mix shader and now we can use our blue value to add an entirely new texture. So I'll just turn this up all the way to blue make sure it's on add and I can just start painting more stuff now right now we have the dirt texture inputted so I'm gonna change this to a wood texture and I'm gonna use this one now as you can see my woods going the wrong direction so I'm just gonna flip this 90 degrees on the Z axis in my mapping coordinates so that's going the right way and maybe I'll change this to something more like two so it's a little bit larger and let me also add some bump nodes just so we have a better idea of what's going on it'll make it look a little bit better I'm just gonna plug this directly into the height you're not really supposed to do this but it's just for the sake of demonstration so who's gonna stop me do that and I'll make a bump node for my other textures dirt one and I'll change the scale of this to something like two there we go, and I can desaturate that to make it look a little better. And I'll do the exact same thing over here for my moss texture. Plug the normal into the normal of my diffuse, plug the color into the height. And there we go. Now, this color is a little bit too bright to me. I want it to be a little lighter, so I'm going to add an RGB curve into it. This part isn't really important to the texturing process, but this is just, uh, just for me, really. Same thing with my moss. My moss is a little bit too dark, so I'm going to brighten it up a little bit. And you know what, um, I'm actually going to use a hue saturation value node. And there we go. So now I have this blue mask that I can paint over everywhere. And um, yeah, make sure anytime you make a change, you select this image and then start painting. And there we go. Now we got these nice streaks of wood. And I could do the same exact thing I did earlier, where I just make a noise texture that mixes between these mix shaders. So let me... Let me do that just to show you what it looks like. And you know what? That looks okay. 
But um, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different to help make this a little bit more realistic. Instead of using a noise texture for the wood, I am going to use a Voronoi texture. So I'll just unplug that. I'm going to add in a Voronoi texture. And I'll plug the distance into my color ramp. And then next, I'm going to change this Voronoi texture to Chebyachev or whatever that says. I'm not really sure. Next, I'm going to control T on my mapping coordinates to make this a little bit more interesting. Uh, I'm going to stretch these, so I'm going to make this thing a little bit smaller. And I'll turn up my Voronoi texture. And as you can see, we get these kind of blocky, binary looking things. Now, if I turn up the detail a little bit, it'll smooth them out. And I can turn up the roughness. And then, I'm going to flip these so it's more like that. Now, I have these long streaks if I change the scale of this stuff. Long streaks of wood, it looks a little bit more realistic. Then if I can just, if I just go through, I can just paint on stuff and it'll randomly give me some some broken up wood. I'm gonna bring it back a little bit so I got some more. Just add in these broken slats of wood where the paint has kind of chipped off. There you go, from afar that looks pretty good. So, um, that's almost it. Uh, the last thing you can do is um, this mask actually has the ability to do four uh, different texture masks, uh, not three. Uh, we have the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. You can't use black and white. It doesn't really work that well. Uh, what you can use is the alpha mask, and you can basically just paint the exact same way as before using the alpha mask in order to create a fourth mixed shader node, uh, which is really cool and very nice and uh, yeah, that's, I mean, basically the whole gist of the video. And anytime you made an update, you got to make sure to save it. Otherwise, it won't show up in the viewport. And then we'll just reload it. That's how I got my texture from this area over here to this. Which, uh, you know, it's a little bit over the top. But it's kind of just for demonstration purposes. It's a cool method. You can combine proceduralism with uh, actual painted textures or you can go another route with it. I'll show you how to go another route really, really, really quickly. Uh, let's go to my other my other church and save this. So if you wanted to, you can go a completely different route. I'm gonna duplicate this texture and delete everything off of it. I'll keep one of my mixed colors and I'm gonna use this little piece just cause it's a little uh, easier to see, but I'm gonna add in a new UV map make it UV or name it whatever you want. Um, let's make sure I have my other wood material so I'm not messing with anything important. And then I'll just add in a new diffuse shader, plug it in and I can add in a dirt texture to it real quick. And then, this is something I use as well pretty often, is I can plug an image texture of any kind into here and use something like a concrete texture uh, where there's concrete leaking or something like that. Um, I'll use this one. This is a pretty good one. I'll plug this UV map into here, and I'll use that as my mix factor. So now, I'll just get a color ramp and use this to control the factor of the mix between these two. I'm going to change this to UV, and then in my UV editor, let's go find the data properties, make sure I'm selected with UV. I can select this whole side or something and press U project from view or Q project whichever one that I want let's go find that grunge wall no it's uh, concrete something let's go it's called thumb large I gotta rename that because that is not intuitive to find so I'll just use these as my mix factor and then go into my shader editor make sure that it mixes well this here we go just like that and then if I go preview this let's flip them around because it's backwards just have some quick and dirty um, walls and stuff. And I'll just go through and do the same thing over here. Just do a quick U, Q, project, and there we go. It just kind of fits right there. Uh, this is kind of a hacky method, but uh, I've used it quite a bit. And uh, it's a great way to get good results. You can do the exact same thing where you just start layering different textures over top of each other. If I want to, I can quickly change this texture, make it moss instead. And yeah, it's a really cool way to just get stuff done quickly. So, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, if you want to see more stuff about texturing or about scene creation, anything like that, uh, go to my Patreon. The link will be in the description. Also, if you want to download any of my assets or stuff, you can go to my Gumroad. I'll be putting the church up on the Gumroad, and it'll also be on my Patreon. 
along with a uh, simple node group that you can use that'll allow you to just quickly set up these textures where all you have to do is plug an image in and it'll do the rest for you. So anyway, thank you very much and I'll see you later.